Hi guys, in this tutorial slash overview, we will be looking at the Blue Cat's Frequency Analyst Multi. As you may be aware, there are lots of analysts out there boasting their own unique settings. But as we start to delve into this particular analyst, I think you will realise you can't go far wrong with this one. You will see more as we go along, but what initially impressed me with the Blue Cat's is the intention to detail. And the one place you want lots of detail and accuracy is on an analyst. First, let's take a moment and talk about what is a frequency analyst and how they can be useful. In layman's terms, a frequency analyst analyzes the frequency spectrum of any given instrument and relays this information back in a variety of different displays. Each analyst may choose to display this information differently, but the most common is within a grid or graph form. So as with any grid or graph reading, you are given two basic forms of information. With a frequency reading, you are getting shown the frequencies being reached, usually shown at the bottom of the grid, and the dB, decibels, in which those frequencies are reaching, shown along the left-hand side of the graph. This is the basic use of analysts, and each one will give you a slightly different way of being able to control the display and sensitivity of these readings. In my experience, analysts can sometimes be very vague. Ones that come bundled with software can sometimes be limited in the way they present their reading. As with Blue Cat's version, however, you are getting a much more accurate and precise reading because of the amount of control you are given over how you want the display to be shown. As for what an analyst is used for, they are used mainly to help EQ a specific instrument, instruments, or bus track. By giving you the instrument's frequency readings, you are then able to adjust the equalization on that instrument to alter the sound and blend it into or make it stand out from whatever other instruments you have also recorded. An instrument's frequency spectrum is very important when it comes to knowing what to boost and or attenuate to get the best sound. Without the knowledge of these frequencies, I'm afraid you are EQing in the dark. Professional engineers will have mental knowledge of an instrument's basic frequency spectrum and therefore would be able to EQ without an analyst better than the average person, but analysts still play a major role in every studio, professional or otherwise. OK, so let's take a look at what makes this one special. First off, as the name suggests, you are able to get a reading from more than one instrument at a time, and therefore getting a clearer contrast from one instrument spectrum to another, which has obvious benefits. Let's open up the analyst now and take a closer look. We will start off by looking at the analyst inside a single instrument first, just to get familiar with the layout. The first screen you are greeted with is the routing screen. On the left hand side are different channels and their curves. So our four channels are channel 1 and 2, or mid and sides, depending on the mode setting, which we will talk about later. And finally, the combination of these channels, and the ones I use most often. Channels average and channels max. Each has the same curves, these are the way in which the information will be displayed on the graph. So instant will show you a real-time display of the frequencies as the instrument plays and will update itself constantly. Peak will show you the point at which that frequency or frequencies peaked in terms of dB and you are able to adjust how often the curve updates itself later on. And average will show you the average frequency is being reached and at what dB based on the information by the other two curves. So at the moment we have this analyst inside a synth part so we will apply the three curves to the channel average. Set instant to 1, peak to 2 and average to 3. Notice that once you have selected a curve to one channel you are unable to select it in another. So if I only wish to know the real-time frequency information on all my instruments, by selecting the instant curve and no other for each instrument, I could in fact have up to 16 instruments displayed at one time. We now want to name each curve so we know what is being displayed inside our graph. So we will name each one appropriately, synth instant, synth peak, and synth average. Once we have done that, just click outside the box to see the graph. OK, so here we are. Now before we go looking at all these settings, let's see the display in action whilst this information is fresh in our minds. I will just play the track now and have a look at the display.
you will notice only two curves start immediately, curve instant and curve peak. It takes a little while for the curve average to obtain enough information to determine the average reached. After a while, you'll notice it rise gradually to its given value. OK, so let's start to discuss these settings available to us on this analyst. We will start at the bottom as these settings directly affect the display being shown and has a lot to do with how accurate you want your information to be given. Here is where the analyst can become personal to how you like to work. It is possible to push all the changes made to these settings to all of the instances of the analyst that may be on other tracks by using the big push button on the left. Or you can also push individual settings by pressing the little red arrows next to each setting. The first two are simple. Precision determines how precise the reading will be displayed on the graph. The higher the precision, the more precise the frequency reading, also the higher the CPU consumption. The speed relates to smoothness and resolution of the display. The higher the setting, the smoother the display, but anything above 100% can also take up CPU in the process. The next three along are to do with the curve's envelope settings, so we have attack time and release time shown in milliseconds, and the peak reset dial. The attack will change how quickly or slowly the curve reacts, and the release is basically the same, but changes how quickly the curve dips in response to the information it is given. Let's have a look at these now to get a better understanding. The peak reset basically dials in when the peak curve resets itself. Again, let's see this. The next two dials along are to do with the spectrum display. The absolute threshold dial means that all frequencies that are under this value are set to minus 120 dB. In layman's terms, anything below the blue arrow to the right of the graph will not be visible. Good if you want to focus on a particular section of frequencies that are hitting certain decibels. Although not a function I use very often, I can see how it could be used for certain situations. The relative dial allows you to dial in a percentage of the maximum value, Again, anything under this value is set to minus 120 dB. The next two dials are a little more advanced, as the slope dial can be used to correct the response curve such that pink noise frequency response is flat. Pink noise is very much like the more commonly heard white noise. Pink noise is a type of signal that contains all the sound frequencies that can be heard by the human ear. Although pink noise can be used to mask other low frequencies because it has lower frequencies than any other type of noise. It is also used to help determine the frequency response of acoustic equipment. Pink noise is something I will not be going into in this tutorial. If you wish to learn more, I suggest researching pink noise if you want to know the benefits that the slope dial can give. The offset dial goes hand in hand with the slope curve as it helps correct the response curve. At the top right, we have our resets for average and peak and our mode settings. This is where we determine what channels 1 and 2 do in the routing screen. In stereo mode, channel 1 is left and channel 2 is right. In mono, channel 1 is mono and channel 2 is silent. In mid slash side mode, channel 1 is the mid and channel 2 is the side or stereo. So a lot of options and a lot of room for accurate readings depending on your recording. To the immediate right, we have our routings or curves. Here we can also store certain readings and compare them later on. So for instance, we could store the average curve level of our synth in slot A and compare another average of a different instrument to slot B and compare the details to determine what we might do in the EQing process. Just above the settings at the bottom of the screen, we can determine whether we want our curves filled in or not, whether we want our curves to be anti-aliased or if we want to display the curve names. We can also show or hide the curve list to the right. You will notice that as you move your mouse inside the graph, you will get a real-time reading 
of the frequency and dB depending on where your mouse pointer is currently on, plus the key, an extremely useful tool when wanting to pinpoint an exact frequency and its level. This now leads us to the top of the screen. From left to right we have our bypass button. Next to this we have a transparent slider, a nice little addition, not something I tend to use and it can be hard to find the slider again if you have faded it out too much, but a feature that does what it says it does very well. The next button along adds additional features to the settings at the bottom. With these you can MIDI learn the dials, bring up the settings, and the enable automation button seems to be selected for you by default. The next button along simply shows or hides the settings we were looking at. The next button along brings you back to this view if you happen to be looking at the diff view, which is coincidentally what the next button takes you to. We will come back to this view in a second. The next button allows you to display both views next to each other in two different ways. The next three buttons alter the size of the view. Next we have the routing button. After that we have a sync button to all other instances and a freeze all button which will freeze any curve in the view. Above this we have our undo and redo buttons. Ok so let's take what we have learnt so far and see this analyst in action and how we might utilise the information given to us in regards to EQing. We will start off by analysing one instrument we currently have the analyst on a synth section, so let's take a look. I now, for argument's sake, want to compare this to our bass synth track, so we will insert another instance of the analyst onto our bass track. I again want to see the average values of this channel, so in channels average we will select 4, 5 and 6 for our curves as 1, 2 and 3 have been used by our last track. We will name these Base Instant, Base Peak and Base Average. As you can see it can become quite busy and sometimes hard to make out each curve. Good however if you want a quick overview and you can quite quickly determine if one track is taking up the same frequencies as another. But for a more accurate reading let's hide all curves except the instant curves for both tracks. And let's have another look. Now what I like to do is to turn on the average curves for both tracks and wait for the information to settle and then store both curves for review. So let's do this now. Now with this information we can make some alterations to the EQ based on the average frequencies hit and the dB in which they are being hit at. So here I can see between the areas of around 1k to 10k both tracks are very close together and therefore taking up the same frequencies. I could reduce the presence of the bass track in this area by adding a low pass filter or by lowering the frequencies individually. Let's bring up the Pro Channel EQ inside Sonar X2 and add in a low pass filter to the bass track and knock off anything past 1k, just to show you the effect.
and let's play the two tracks again and see the results. Again, I can see that around 220 Hz, they are both taking up the same area in frequency, so I could add a high pass filter to the synth track to lessen its presence there, or dial in a low mid band cut at around this area. Let's try this now. And let's have a look at the results, with an A-B comparison of a before and after the EQ on both tracks. Obviously I was making very drastic changes there to show you the effect, but you can start to see how powerful an analyst can be when used side by side with EQing techniques. And the fact that the Blue Cats analyst updates its view so quickly and smoothly, you are able to see what effect your changes have made on any given track and compare those results with other tracks in real time. Let's now go through the settings at the bottom of the screen, as the instant curves are playing so you get a sense of what each one does visually. I will go through each one at a time. Let's have a look now at a situation in which you might want to compare a left and right signal. 